y'all it's katie and welcome back to my channel today i'm talking all about the process of getting and sending out your wedding invitations there's so much to go over so i separated it into three categories picking your style and different parts of an invitation the physical content to put on the invitation and how to assemble them i thought invitations were as simple as picking some that you like and sending them out and that's that but oh my goodness this takes so much more time and effort than i ever could have imagined so i hope this video can help anyone that is interested in the wedding invitation process or is going through it themselves. Also, I just sent out my invitations today, finished packaging them, just took them to the post office, came back here and I'm filming this. If I want to remember what I look like when I was doing my invitations, here I am. Not sure when I'm posting this, but if you haven't gotten your invitation yet and you're expecting one, maybe don't watch this if you want your invitation to be a surprise. So starting with picking your invitation style and the different parts that go with it. I talked about this a bit in my wedding update video, but you want to start doing this between three and six months out from your wedding. People typically say to send out your wedding invitation six to eight weeks. I would err on the side of two months out from your wedding. But in order for everything to come together, you're gonna wanna start earlier than you think you need to. So it took us a few days, maybe a week to go through a bunch of different websites after work that we were deciding on where we wanna get our invitations from. We ended up using Minted, which was amazing. They have so many customizable sets of invitations. You can change the stuff on there and they'll have a designer go through and make it pixel perfect and then send back a digital proof to you, which was so key in what we were doing because there were a few parts of the invitations that we had changed quite a bit on. And you can get free samples of the different invitation styles that you're looking at. That was honestly the most helpful because I thought that I wanted to get an invitation set that was super colorful, a bunch of different colors throughout all the different cards and everything. But seeing them in person, I actually really liked the black and white cards for the simplicity of it and also readability. It was so much easier just to read the black and white card than some of the other ones that had colors on them or even the gray and white I thought would be easy to read but the black was way better. For example these were some of the ones that I got with the colors. I don't know if you can see them on here but I really thought this blue was so pretty and also this kind of oatmeal color but it was honestly so hard to read with the white text. So we ended up just going with this black and white set which we loved so much. It was so simple and it had all the different components we were looking for. Speaking of the different components you have your invitation, a details card, an RSVP card. We also did a belly band which was kind of cool I didn't know that's what they were called but it's just like something that wraps around your whole suite and then some people will also do a direction card which is exactly what it sounds like it's just a list of directions in order to get to the venue but we ended up just putting that information on our wedding website for the physical content breakdown oh my goodness this is honestly the part that took the absolute longest because you want to make sure that you have all the right information on each part of your invitation for the actual invitation envelope so this is where everything goes you need to start by figuring out how you want to address your recipients so we just had a little design on here and then we had everyone's names and addresses printed on this front part if you're doing an outer and inner envelope the outer envelope is typically more formal and that's where it has the address of the person you're sending it to the inner envelope would be less formal you can kind of write whatever you want on there because postage isn't gonna see it I had never heard of the double envelope before so we didn't do an inner envelope but we kind of use that same method method when writing out our RSVP card. So I'll touch on that in a second. For addressing married couples, on the outer envelope, you would do something like Mr. and Mrs. Bieber, Mr. and Mrs. Justin Bieber, something like that. Whatever the most formal thing you want to do. We ended up just doing Mr. and Mrs. last name. That way both parties are on an equal playing field. For the inner envelope, that's where you would just put either first names or first and last names. So you would do like Justin and Haley or Justin and Haley Bieber. For an unmarried couple, you would put something like Mr. Travis Barker and Miss Courtney Kardashian. On the inner envelope is where you would put something again like Travis and Courtney or Travis Barker and Courtney Kardashian. For single guests or guests that you may either not have a close relationship with their partner or something like you're just going to address that person. On the outer envelope you would put something like Miss Billie Eilish. On the inner envelope you would put Billy or Billie Eilish and then if they have a plus one you would put Billie Eilish and guests. That's all for addressing your recipients. For your return address that can either be the bride's parents, the groom's parents, your own address, whoever's receiving the RSVPs. I'll cover it up because my parents' address is on here, but on this back flap is where I would suggest putting the actual address. That way only the recipient's address is on the front and the stamp and it looks super clean. And then on the back, you can do something like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Sam Smith, or my personal favorite, which is what we ended up doing, is the Smith family or the Rainey family in my case. Whatever you want to do for those return addresses. Finally, 
moving on to the actual invitation content. I'll use the sample invitation that they sent us as an example, but some key pieces of information to include are something like, please join us for the wedding of Katie and Josh or something like that. We wanna include the date, the ceremony start time, the location. So for this, it has the property that it's on and the city that it's in. You can also include the address if you're not having any additional details or RSVP cards. And they have something that says reception to follow, which we kept because it lets people know that there's a party going on afterwards. Also, if you're not including any other information in your invitation and you're only having this one single card, I would highly suggest having how people are supposed to RSVP and when they need to RSVP by. Moving on to the detail card, this one was a little easier to put together. We just wanted a separate card with some quick facts about the event. The example that I actually have right now, this was a direction card that we ended up altering to fit our needs. Some key details we included on our card were the address, so what they would physically need to plug into their maps if they couldn't find the venue when they looked it up, and some details like what to expect, attire, and our wedding website for more information. We included the website URL and the password. Also, any info that I added on this detail card, I also added to our wedding website in a new section, basically word for word for what's on this card, if anyone wants to go look at it at a glance. For the RSVP card, oh my goodness, this was the hardest thing to figure out what to do because there are so many different possibilities of what you can include on here, and it's important to receive the right information from your guests in order to be able to put on your event. We actually ended up changing this whole bottom half. We really liked the top half with the please respond by date. That way we can get final numbers for catering, seating charts, all that good stuff. We also kept the spot for the names. We really liked that line. And this is where I'm talking about I was kind of using that same inside envelope method. So I ended up writing everyone's names on here and also if they had a guest, that way they would know if they had any plus ones. And if people were to send back their RSVP cards, I would know who they were. I know some people will write numbers on the back of their RSVP cards, which honestly would probably take a lot less time than writing everyone's names. But I just wanted to be super careful about who was RSVPing and making sure that we had all the right info. I actually made a mistake when I was writing out these names. My girlfriends were some of the first people that I was writing out their RSVP cards. I started off more formal with like the Miss, Emma, and Guest and stuff like that because that's what it said on their outer envelope. But I realized that was redundant. I switched over and everything's fine. If you make a mistake, you just continue. So the lower half is where we completely switched it up. Instead of just having straight accept, request, and then circling whatever options, I wanted to make sure that it was customizable per each guest. So what we ended up doing was creating a space for them to be able to write how many of the guests were attending out of the certain spots that they had allocated. And if they couldn't come, that's where they could regretfully decline or say that they were celebrating from afar, which I thought was a little lighter than just saying yes or no. Like I feel bad when I say no on people's stuff. Also, we put a spot for them to be able to choose what food they wanted, which originally I didn't think that we needed to have because we are doing a buffet style. So it's not like plated where you would select a specific piece of meat or meat alternative. But we wanted to make sure because we are serving barbecue that we had enough vegetarian options for people. And Josh honestly really pushed for this to be on the RSVP card. And I'm so glad that he did because I completely agree with him now. And then finally, we put something on there that says alternatively, you can RSVP online. And then we have our wedding website details on that detail card so we didn't repeat it here but because we actually set up our wedding website and had RSVP enabled online since we sent out our save the date I had to go back and add the catering question onto those RSVPs luckily not too many people did it online yet so I can just reach out to them individually if you've already RSVP'd go back on there and choose what you want for food but that's something important to know if you are giving people the ability to RSVP as soon as you send out your save the dates for the RSVP return on Envelope. Again, just put the Rainey family on it. We don't have any return addresses, just this one. So that way people can send back their RSVP card if they wanna do it on paper. And the last component is the belly band, which is completely optional. And I thought it was really funny. I had no idea that's what it was called. But it just holds everything together and just has your names on it and it's really cute. So this is the sample one, it's black and white. We end up changing the color of the background in order to match our theme. So it's like a really pretty dusty blue. For the actual assembly of the invitations, oh my goodness. Once you order your invitations and you do standard shipping, if you do mint it, it takes about one to two weeks to get them. We ended up rush shipping because we were running a little late, so we got them really fast. The first thing that you want to do is get your invitations weighed. So what I mean by that, put together one full invitation suite. Your invitation, details, direction cards, RSVP cards, everything that you're going to mail out. Package it together, don't seal it, and take it to the post office to be weighed. Normal stamps can hold up to one ounce of postage, but because wedding 
invitations can have so many different components in them. You might need to buy special stamps in order to accommodate for the weight of your envelope. So for example, our invitation envelopes, we ended up having to get two ounce stamps because it was so heavy. But for the RSVP card envelopes, which go inside, we only had to use one ounce stamps. Also, post offices are typically only open nine to five or the one by us is open till 5.30. So just try to go right after work one day and just get it weighed. It takes like two seconds after you've waited in line. And that way you can buy your stamps while you're there and just get everything. So steps of the assembly. Number one, Josh and I went through and put stamps on all of the envelopes. Put the two ounce ones on the big invitation envelopes and then we put the normal stamps on the RSVP envelopes. That way, that part of the process was done and it would be so much easier to assemble instead of having to do multiple different types of things. It also helps with the count. We knew exactly how many invitations there were. I will say, even though we did the right amount of RSVP envelopes, I ended up being one short. So one of my lucky guests probably has two RSVP envelopes in their invitation. Could not tell you who it is, but at least that was the only thing that got doubled. Then that's actually when I wrote everyone's names on the RSVP card. So once I made sure that everything was good, we weighed it, did the stamps. Then I took a few hours to write out everyone's names on those RSVP cards. Third, we set up an assembly line according to the instructions that we were given with our minted package, which was amazing. So how we would go through that is we'd first grab the invitation envelope to know who it was going to. We'd grab the invitation. Then, oh my gosh, I forgot they included this paper. Let's see if I can pull one out. So after we had the invitation, we would put this little piece of paper over it. And I think it's supposed to preserve the invitation, especially with everything else on top of it. I guess if things move around in there, it doesn't scratch off some of the information. I don't know. We didn't specifically order it and it came with our package and it makes it look so nice. Then we'd put the detail card, the stamped RSVP envelope and make sure that it's stamped because Josh and I actually had a few extras that we didn't put stamps on. And some of those accidentally got in the cards, but we noticed it before we sealed them. So we were able to go back and check. So we had to restuff some of the envelopes. The RSVP card, which makes sure that the name on the RSVP card matches the invitation envelope. Then you fold the belly band around the grouping of the invitation, transparent sheet, detail card, envelope, and RSVP card. You sticker it shut on the back and you stuff that little package into the invitation envelope. I would highly suggest stuffing each and every envelope and do not close any of them until you're done because there were some times that we had to go back and double check names or the RSVP card stamped, etc. So once you have all the envelope stuff, that's when you can go through and seal them. We ended up using these really cool adhesive pens. I actually had ordered some on Amazon and then my order got canceled. So I had to run down to Office Depot today and grab a few of these. But they were so cool. You just had to do like one strip of glue along the little strip that people would typically lick. That way, you know, no germs, COVID, all that good stuff. Make sure you squeeze the pen though and press it on the actual envelope. I was just pressing it and not a lot of glue was coming out and I didn't know why but you have to like push it down and squeeze the tube and then a bunch comes out but these are honestly really cool I might just use them for my everyday life going forward and they're so convenient then for our final step once everything was sealed I put all of our envelopes in a big shopping bag took them to the post office because I was afraid of just doing a drop box I wanted to make sure I handed it to an actual person and drop them off hopefully they're all perfect and everyone gets the right amount gets the right invitation all that good stuff it was so much fun to put all of them together and to finally see the finished product but honestly, it took a lot more time than we were expecting. So again, try and start early. And that is the process of sending out your wedding invitations. I hope this helps anyone who may be going through the process or if you were just interested in how we put ours together. If y'all have any more questions on invitations or just anything about getting married in general, I'd love to help. Thank y'all so much for watching to the end of this video and see y'all soon.